in today's video, I'm going to be walking through how to get the open source photo mode implemented into your Unity project. So let's take a look at that and get stuck right into it. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to start a URP project. And we'll just call this a photo mode. I'm going to have to call this a tutorial because I've already got a photo mode project. And we just want to hit create and wait for that to load up. Just while we're waiting for that project to load up, um, I'm going to be using the starter assets third person character controller, uh, which is provided for free by Unity. Um, I'll have that link in the description below and you can come and um, check that out and get that downloaded. Okay, so uh, here we are in Unity. Um, for There's a few projects that we need for the um, photo mode to plug in and just work straight away. So we need Cinemachine, so we'll grab that. We also need the Unity input system which um, if I go over to my assets and install the third person controller starter assets, uh, because, because the input system is a dependency of that project, so that project needs um, the input system to work, this will install the input system for us as well. So uh, I can click imp import here, and I'll just import this into the project as well. Uh, and eventually it'll want me to reload the project uh, to get the input system to turn on. So once that comes up, I'll reload the project and come back into the project. Okay, so back in Unity, uh, that should be everything that we need. Um, and I'm just going to go into the starter assets folder, third person controller folder, scenes and playground, just to open up the playground. And then I'll need to come up to uh, edit, render pipeline, universal render pipeline and upgrade the project materials to URP materials. So if I just, um, I'm going to put my layout to the my saved preferred saved layout. Um, so if I hit play, you can see that we've got the third person control here. We can run around, jump, move the camera around. This is all using the new input system. Like I said, that's free. Um, it's a really great uh, kind of test project to get set up. Um, so I'm just going to come out of that and uh, stop that. Okay, so the next thing you need to do is you want to download the actual photo mode. So if you go over to uh, their GitHub page, which again, the link will be in the description. Um, if you come over to, first of all, this is a bit of an overview, uh, the requirements that you need. So you need a Cinemachine Brain virtual camera, um, which the third person starter assets have. We've just installed all this, so that's fine. And there's a bit of setup here as well that you can read through. Um, I'll go through that quickly with you though when we get it in. Um, so you just wanna come over to the releases section here. Come down to the photo mode underscore version 3 Unity package and download um, this. I've already downloaded it. So back in Unity, if we go over to assets and then import package, custom package, and then if we navigate to where we've downloaded our Unity package, we can just double click that and get that loaded in. Just hit import. Okay, so that's imported. Um, I'm just going to bring my character up here just so, because it's just a bit of a more interesting area to look at. Really wish, like in Unreal, you could press a button while dragging it and it would just snap it to the ground. We just want to come to the camera and just check post-processing just to turn that on. Um, just so some of the kind of filters from the uh, photo mode actually work. And then if we go over to photo mode prefabs and then drag in the photo mode prefab. And then if we hit play, stop playing, then normally if you, so the photo mode shortcut key is P. Uh, the first time you do it, you'll have to import the TMP essentials. So we'll just uh, hit import for those. And we'll stop playing first and then hit import TMP essentials. Okay, and what you want to do next is just drag the player armature or whatever you want the photo mode to focus on into the player object slot here. And this will also allow you to get sort of reference to this object. You could always um, hide it. You could hide the player object. You could add like an option. You could add a switch as well to hide the player if you wanted, and you could access that player object through here, through the script. So now if we hit P, um, you can see that photo mode's working. Um, and that's almost exactly how simple it is. If you want to take it into your own project and not the starter project, um, there is some instructions on the GitHub page about how you need to come to your forward renderer. Make sure there's something called a blit on it. Um, new blit and then in the blit material you can just search for blit material and then over in photo mode um, down here where it says blit material uh, blit you just drag that and then click the blit that you've made i'm not 100 percent sure what a blit is um 
but according to the Game Dev Glossary Online, uh, it says to blit is to copy bits from one part of a computer's graphical memory to another part. So, I mean, that's all you need, really need to know. It kind of works once you, you've set it there and then assigned it here. Um, so now if I just maximize on play, hit play. So we've got our third person character controller. If we jump up here, and then we jump off this block and press P, you see the game pauses and we've got our um, photo mode. So I'm just moving around with the mouse here. Uh, there's a couple of buttons, it all says down at the bottom. So we can use the left and right square brackets to move the camera up and down. We can get a rule of thirds kind of grid if we want to pose it. Uh, we can hide the UI with two and bring that back with two as well. Press three to reset the kind of camera position. Get rid of the grid. Um, okay, and then so the menu on the right here, we control this with uh, W, A, S, and D. So W and S go down the different options. Um, a and S, uh, A and D, sorry. Go along the sliders. So we can choose to change the view distance. Lower the aperture. Lower the focus distance. Let's get that nice and blurry. And have a nice blurred background like that. And change the exposure. Um, and this is why you need to set the post process and checkbox on the camera. Just make sure that's set up. Uh, you can control the contrast, saturation. You get a vignette. You can either have a white one or a black one. Uh, and then we've also got filters. So there's some interesting filters here that are just built in by default. Um, I believe these are done through Shader Graph. So if you want to write your own, you can do that. We've got frames. And there's stickers. So we can come down here and press enter to enter sticker mode. And then using WAS and D, we can move them around. You can resize them with the bracket key. Rotate them with one and two. You press enter to stamp the sticker and you can press four as well to swap. And you can see up here at the top, in the top center of the screen, we've got the different stickers. Um, and I'll show you how to add your own frames and stickers as well. And we can press P to go back. And then if you want to just kind of reframe it slightly, you can do, you hide the UI and then press print screen and that should save the photo. So if we just back out of this, so if I press P, you can see we fall and the game, oh, the game just resumes as normal. Okay, so how do we add our own stickers? I hear you asking, and our own frames. I also hear you asking, and the way we do that is quite simple. So, so I've made a couple of custom stickers and stuff uh, for this already. Uh, I just made these in Photoshop. I'm just going to drag these in here and I'm going to make sure they are all set to Sprite 2D and UI. Hit apply just to get their um, transparencies correct. Um, so you can just drag in kind of any stickers you want. And we'll start with the stickers first. So underneath the photo mode prefab, you've got the sticker controller and we have sticker sprites here. You can see that we've got sticker one. Sticker two, sticker three, four, five, and six. And we can add our own stickers here. Um, so I'll drag this one up to the top and I'll go back and I can drag in my custom sticker to that slot. So if we press play now, press P, orbit round, go into sticker mode. You can see that the first one in that slot now is our custom sticker that we've made. So I can give him a nice little face. Uh, press enter to stamp that, go back to normal mode, kind of position that a bit more. Oh, and I've ruined it. I press reset, um, but you get the picture. Uh, we'll go back into sticker mode and stamp that up. P to go back, there we go, and then two to hide the UI. So you can do that quite easily from here. So that's how you add custom stickers. Um, custom frames is a little bit more buried, but still quite easy. So if you um, open up the photo mode UI, canvas, frames, uh, you can see there's just different frames here. So if I enable the photo mode UI, 
we've got our frames here. So there's the classic frame, the letterbox frame, and these are just made up of the top edge, the bottom edge, and kind of, you know, just normal UI elements um, that are set up as these frames. Um, so I'm just going to duplicate this frame MWU2, which is the Made With Unity logo. And I'm just going to call this uh, Game Logo. And if we expand that, you can see that there's an image here, and it's just the Made With Unity logo here. Um, I can drag in, uh, I'll drag in the white version of my awesome Game Logo which you can drop in there. And now, um, to get these new frames in, it's again, quite buried. There's no frame controller, unfortunately, but uh, I mean, you could make one yourself if you wanted to, um, but we can go down into menus here and then right column, which is this column here. Then we can go into the menu for photo mode, go into option frame, click on slider, and then you see we've got our slider custom options here. And if we drag those options up here, we've got non classic cinema, MW, made with Unity 1, made with Unity 2. We can just add in um, a new frame. And again, we can drag that up, uh, reorder them how we want. And I'll just call this uh, white logo. And then we just need to go back up and drag our frame game logo into that slot. And then again, if we hit play, Come around here, press P, go down to frame mode, and then we can go through. And you can see here that we have our uh, My Awesome Game logo frame. And this is the white logo frame. And it's the classic, the MW, MW1, the white logo. Um, again, we can hide the UI, and that's all there. Uh, we could put different versions of the logo in, so like a black version, just like the Made of Unity stuff. I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, that's how easy it was to get that in and set up. Um, if we hide that, so you can see that we've got a prefab here. We've done our custom changes. We've added a new game logo and changed some stuff so we can apply um, that there. So now in all our scenes, if we make sure the photo mode element is there in our kind of scene, the player will always be able to access photo mode. Um, if you want to turn photo mode off in certain places, you can disable this. You can see here that we've got all of the input actions for the new Unity system, for the new input system. Uh, that's all here. Uh, you can change on, say, the. Uh, we've got here the kind of diff. If you want to tweak it slightly, you've got the kind of exposure, min, max values, contrast, saturation, vignette, vertical arm, arm speed, all this sort of stuff. If you want to tweak the um, speed of the free look camera, you can do that here as well. We've got the sticker controller, you can change the cursor speed, the rotate speed, the scale speed. Um, so there's a lot of customizable stuff here. And then if you go into the actual script, we've got all of the script here, it's not hidden away or anything. So we can, um... so yeah, it's just really simple to get sorted. You can add in your new stickers and frames quite easily. Um, just like the frames, if you come down to option filter slider, uh, you've got the different, uh, filters here if you want to uh, make your own in shader graph you can do um, and obviously you've got these shader graphs kind of there for you to dig around in if you want to tweak anything you can do that you can do that here if you want to kind of dive into that but yeah that's it for photo mode a very really powerful free kind of tool uh, for you to play around with and um, obviously you've got everything there to tweak if you need to change anything you want to change the colors or the frames or anything like that um, I think it looks quite nice, the kind of UI they've got. You might want to get rid of that mustard highlight color to fit your game um, if you want to. But yeah, that's just a quick overlook of the photo mode. If you want to see anything specific about how to do anything within the photo mode, uh, let me know in the comments below and I can certainly take a look at that for you if you want. As always, this project will be available on my Patreon. If you want to get that, if you want to get the files, you can do over there. But in the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.